Your Majesty, Your Royal Highness, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, on behalf of my fellow MSPs, can I welcome you and thank you for joining us at the opening of this, the fifth session of the Scottish Parliament. Keard Mila Falcha, Guparlamich Nohalba. A particularly warm welcome to you, Your Majesty, and not just because of the significant milestones you have achieved this year, your presence here today and the support you have given Parliament from the beginning of devolution has helped this institution develop the authority it now enjoys. And I know that many people across this country have enjoyed celebrating with you a remarkable year. On your most recent official visit to Scotland, you became our longest reigning monarch. I was privileged to represent the Parliament last month at St Paul's on the occasion of your 90th birthday celebrations, the same day as the 95th celebrations of Your Royal Highness the Duke of Edinburgh. And it was an enjoyable occasion, made all the more delightful, I may add, when our First Minister, Nicola Sturgeon, introduced our Secretary of State, David Mundell, to your guests as her husband. <laughs> Inadvertently, I may add, as the two had swapped places, but as David Mundell himself observed, we did not need a referendum to know that was one union doomed to disappointment from the start. <laughs> Your Majesty, over nine decades you have witnessed so much. Extraordinary social and economic change, phenomenal scientific and technological advances, disturbing and ever-increasing environmental anxiety. But critically, you have seen successive generation rise to the challenges that lie before them. Your Majesty, the Parliament before you today stands ready for the challenges that lie ahead of us. Every MSP in this chamber is proud to represent the people of Scotland. We have been given the opportunity to serve and to contribute in a Parliament which has been refreshed. Two out of every five MSPs here has been elected for the first time rejuvenating our democracy, reminding us of the promise of devolution to work together across party lines for the good of all. In these few short weeks, weeks of unprecedented political turbulence, I've already seen a real willingness to work together cooperatively and collaboratively. I've seen the emergence of a shared agenda to clarify the identity and the role of this parliament a shared recognition that it is more important than ever that this parliament finds its voice, a voice for hope, to echo Donald Dewar, a voice for the future. And I say more important than ever because these last few weeks have also borne witness to the politics of hate. Today, outside this parliament, we fly the rainbow flag of pride, testimony to the 49 lives lost in the senseless shootings in an Orlando nightclub. A flag which displays our solidarity with the families and the communities they left behind. We continue to mourn the loss of our parliamentary colleague, Joe Cox, and I believe it is simply not good enough to condemn such atrocities. We have been given the privilege of public office and we need to lead by example. Just this week, President Michael D. Higgins of Ireland spoke to this chamber and he warned us against the growth of a temporary incohate populism. And he urged us not to react in kind, but to respond with an open, informed, tolerant and engaged discourse. It was one of the most erudite and powerful arguments for empathy, for the importance of political sympathy I've ever had the privilege to hear. Yes, our exchanges in this parliament should be passionate and robust, but they should also be respectful. Courtesy, compassion, and gentleness are signs of strength, not of weakness, a lesson many of us could learn from the example of Your Majesty. When this building was first constructed, Edwin Morgan described the open and adventurous parliament Scotland wanted to see in his poem, Open the Doors, and he implored us not to let our hope be other than great. I have never given up hope. 
that we can recapture the new kind of politics from which this parliament was born. But it takes determination to move away from the trench warfare of party lines. It takes real purpose if we are to soften the new binary divisions, yes or no, leave or remain. We need to remember and act on the principles on which we were founded, accessible, transparent in our proceedings, sharing power. And it cannot, must not be simply today that the Parliament opens its doors to the people of Scotland. Last Friday morning, we all awoke to the monumental impact of the EU referendum result, an event which has already had a profound and dramatic impact on the political landscape. But I will also re remember that date as my daughter Annie's last day at primary school. And as she moves on to high school, I want her, I want all our children, not to be filled with anxiety. I want her to grow up full of expectation and excitement, secure in the knowledge that we are shaping a positive future for them. I want them to study and learn, to work and to prosper, to play, to laugh, to fall in love in a world in which our humanity can live up to the deepest meaning of the word. Your Majesty, amidst some of the bad news over the last month, there was at least one little moment of joy when your horse, Dartmouth, won at Royal Ascot. <laughs> we shared your undisguised pleasure on our TV screens. <laughs> and politics is a little like horse racing, in that it can often strike people as the triumph of hope over experience. But despite the public cynicism, in my experience, most politicians are incurable optimists. And 17 years ago, almost to this day, I took my place. I was filled with hope as I took my place in the first Scottish Parliament. And as I stand here again today, I can feel that fire rekindled in my heart. We stand at the brink of a new session with all the hope and promise that can bring. We have five years to make a difference, five years to make Scotland a fairer, kinder, and more prosperous country, five years to build a better place for us all to live government or opposition, front or back bench, each one of us has something to contribute. For as Jo Cox said in her maiden speech in the Commons, we have far more in common than that which divides us. My hope, like the poets, is still great. Your Majesty, can I call on you to address this meeting of Parliament?